Hi, this is Dino, and I'm going to show you the authorization code grant type with Apogee Edge. So here we have an example app. Uh, and as you can see, I've got a consumer key and a consumer secret um, for this particular app. And I've got a callback URL registered, which is necessary for the uh, three-legged flow. Now let me flip over to uh, Notepad I've got here. Uh, the way we kick off the authorization code grant is with uh, a get to the authorize endpoint. And what is required for that is specifying the client ID, the redirect URI, a response type of code, and then any scope that was necessary. You can also um, extend this to include things like a nonce and state. I did not include that in this particular example, so we'll confine it to those options. Now, um, this isn't a URL, this is just a bunch of lines of text. This is the URL, and this is all good. So this is the, the happy path, and uh, what I want to do is show you how this works. Um, so open up a new browser tab, and I'll paste that long URL in there. Um, and what I get is... Um, I'll connect to Apogee Edge, and it sees that's a valid um, uh, app and redirects me. So I then have a user consent experience. Um, I log in with my name and my password. Um, so I'm authenticated, and now uh, this experience is asking me, hey, do you grant this scope to the app? And I can consent, and I've got a um, that handler. Uh, registered and I get the code back. So this is a valid code. I'm not actually going to exchange the code for a token, but um, that step is just the next normal step. All right, so that's the happy path. Now let's have a look at uh, some, some error paths. So suppose instead of passing a valid client ID, we pass in this one. So let's go to the same browser tab. We'll paste that in. Uh, immediately I get, hey, that client ID is invalid. Um, of course, with Apogee Edge, you have control. As an API proxy designer with Apogee Edge, you have control over this error message. It doesn't need to look like this. It can be whatever you want. Uh, but um, in any case, it validates the client ID and uh, sees that it's not, um, not valid. So that's what you get with a valid um, invalid client ID. So the next thing we'll try is a uh, incorrect redirect URI. And as you can see in this example, uh, I've got the same host name, same scheme, HTTPS, same host name, uh, but then I have a, a path that is not as, it's not uh, consistent with the path that is registered for this developer app. So I'm gonna paste that into the address bar. And what you'll see is I do get the login screen and I can log in and I can consent. Uh, but what's going to happen is um, when it comes time to issue the code, uh, the uh, OAuth version 2 policy will uh, issue an error. And it will say, hey, that's an invalid redirection URI. That thing that you passed is not as is registered for the app. Uh, that also works. I won't take you through it. If I just flip uh, from HTTPS to HTTP, uh, I'll get the same kind of error. Uh, if I fail to pass a redirect URI, I'll get a similar experience, um, but it'll be a little bit different. Um, so I'm actually missing the redirect URI and the validation fails that. Um, and then finally, what I want to do is show you what it would look like if I passed in a custom URI scheme. So in this case, instead of HTTPS, I'm going to use my URI scheme. And I want it to actually work. So what I'm going to do is edit this app and change the uh, registered uh, callback URL to my URI scheme and keep everything else the same. Now, my URI scheme, colon, whack, whack, you know, all that stuff, it doesn't mean anything. Um, it, this isn't something that a browser is going to be able to interpret. Nonetheless, it is a valid URI. Uh, it could work on a mobile device configured to handle that URI scheme. So this is completely valid. This is a valid configuration. Okay, 
Now what I'm going to do is grab the URL that contains that redirect URI, and you can see my uh, URI scheme is there. So uh, I'm going to grab that URL and once again paste that into the browser tab to kick off the authorization. Uh, before I continue, what I'd like to do is view the developer tools for this browser. And uh, again, we'll uh, authenticate. And the page asks me for my consent. And uh, I clicked consent. Uh, and then what happened? Well, let's have a look. What we can see is, uh, and I hope you're able to see this, uh, the grant consent endpoint has now uh, sent a redirection back with my URI scheme w with the URL um, that contains my URI scheme. So the authorization code that was generated was generated successfully and uh, the URI that, that was registered for the redirect, including that um, custom scheme, was used as the location. So it is successful. Now, there's one thing I want to point out. We made the change to this application and then immediately tried it. There is caching built into Apigee Edge. So if you make this change right and then immediately invoke that API proxy, it's likely that the cache will be warm with old data, with the old callback URL, and it will fail. So uh, what I suggest is if you're doing this yourself, when you make the change to the app, um, modifying the callback URL, you need to wait, especially if you've successfully completed a, um, a request for an authorization code previously. That means the cache will be warm and it will be warm for about um, 180 seconds. Okay, so that's, that's a good uh, estimate for how long you should wait, three minutes uh, after you make that change if you've already made a successful call. Um, once you do that, the cache will be uh, uh, emptied, the cache uh, element will be ejected uh, just based on the time to live, and then you'll get the successful uh, redirection. Now. When I got the redirection, you can see um, that location that's not known to the Chrome browser. So it's treating that as a kind of a goofy request. Uh, there is no such uh, request. There is no such endpoint registered on this machine. However, on a mobile device, you may have uh, a custom URL scheme uh, registered. All right, so that's it.